This is what we're going to take a look at. These are the ladies with the red hats. Beth is giving me my ticket, my sticker to put on. What does it say on there? Tour guests. We saw, just saw an Academy Award winning movie from the 1960s. Living or Great, great to be Alive, what was it called? But we're seeing them at two different times because we are such a large group. Are you checking in right now? Yes. Okay, well, I'm checking in. And if you haven't had a chance, there is a picture right here on the wall that shows what it actually looked like at the New York World's Fair. Well, when the fair closed, the Rondell was... Product display for the uh, Johnson Wax products. Pledge. Windex. Off. Raid. Scrubble bubble. Shout. Fantastic. This tower opened in 1950s and it's unfortunately no longer used today. You ask why it's no longer used. Can't grow up? I'll tell you. There's no sprinkler system in all 14 floors of that tower. There's only one emergency exit that I'll be pointing out to you when we There are still some offices in the first floor, but unfortunately now we use the rest for storage. Uh, we will not be going into the tower, but we will be walking right underneath it. Um, as we're walking down this walkway path, I will encourage you to look to the left. There's a building that kind of looks like a hospital. Oh, it used to be a hospital. It used to be St. Mary's Hospital, and that's where our research and development is done now. Um, is there any questions? So there's the administration building. We're going into that. That's got the cafeteria. No film, she said, after we go through this. And this is the... the the theater that we were in, the Golden Rondell Theater, that looks like a spaceship that was at the 1963 World's Fair in Long Island, it became uh, Flushing Meadows. That's not on there. These are the specials. Uh, chicken tenders that are sliced and then they're made into the wrap. Okay. Otherwise, we have the fish sandwich, which we use for our fish fry. That's uh, this cod. It's very good. Yes. But you had caught here too, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a broiled cod dinner if you like. Hey, this is Racine. This is Main Street right here that's uh, going over. Looks like the bridge is going to go up. We got a boat coming from somewhere. I don't know where it is, but the gate's going down. It must be on the other side. Oh, there it's that sailboat. The sailboat's ready to come through, go on the Great Lakes. This is a Great Lake port. There goes the bridge. Rising into its enclosure on either side. I don't know if he's going to make open up all the way to let that sailboat come through. Here comes the sailboat. He's maneuvering right in the middle. Doesn't want to whack his mast on anything. That's about the size of the one we took in um, the Greek Isles. But that's about 37 feet, sleeps about 8 or so, maybe 10. Very similar. Power boat going through. So the bridge is all the way up now and it's 
totally open position and soon it'll start coming down. <laughs> There's a little um, zodiac coming right behind it. That's a 45. That's a legend 45 right there. That's the life, huh, guys? Whoops. Legend 45, captain and crew. Going out to the lake, which is right around the corner here. Oh, it's got it. Shoulders, the big open arches are flying buttresses, that's the Gothic styling, and combined it is post modern. Now, post means after. Flying after buttresses, modern. they call that. It's got to be a modern, right? So now we got to find out what that is. All right, down the river on the right hand side, we're going to see a tall gray glass and steel building. It's got some white lettering on the bottom there. For those with eagle eyes, you can already make out that it says fidelity on it there. So we call this modernism. Now, modernism says less is more. It says the building should be nothing but skeleton, skin, and space. It should always be rectangular in shape and use only modern materials, glass and steel. So there's modernism, 1965, postmodernism, 1989. Postmodern, modern, modern, postmodern, postmodern, modern, modern, postmodern, postmodern, modern, 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 before we get to it though, there's the IBM the building, John. Right hand side, a true Chicago landmark for Wrigley Building, commissioned by the Chewing Gum King Wrigley. The bridge was made up by uh, Graham Anderson Probst and White were the architects. The style is called Beaux Art Style. Beaux Art is a French Renaissance festoon of the Renaissance style. This close up view of the Wrigley, you can see almost every square inch of the building is festooned or decorated in some way. That's the Beaux Art Style. It's clad in a white glazed terracotta so that the floodlight at night glows like the moon. It's really pretty if you get a chance to see it. These different colors that you have here. Green on St. Patrick's Day, pink on Mom's Day, red, white, blue, black, black. Now in case you can't tell from the, uh, directly in front of us, in case you can't tell from the minimalist signage, this is the new Trump Tower in Chicago. It's going to be Trump tall. Is it going to be? See where it is now? This is the Trump About Tower going up. It'll be another third taller now. Wow. At 1,362 feet, it'll be the second tallest in the city. Adrian Smith, who did the NBC Tower, is the architect of Trump Tower as well. Do you remember the first series of The Apprentice where he had a Chicago project he was going to work on? This is it. This is the Chicago project the winner got to work on. Now coming up behind Trump Tower, we have a black square block of a building. It's uh, built in 1973 as the IBM building. It's now called 330 North Wabash, but it is a very historically significant structure. The last commission here in Chicago of a very important name in architecture, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Came to Chicago, Germany in 1938. Having been head of the Bauhaus School of Architecture there, came here headed up the IIT or Illinois Institute of Technologies Architecture School. That was the IBM building that I interviewed uh, and decided to stay in Paris. Interviewed with uh, Terry Lautenbach from Cincinnati fame. Look at nature, look at flowers, look at trees, there's no boxes in nature. Maybe you should do a couple of shapes. Terminating in semi-circular boxes. All emanating from a central stem. Maybe you should do the 1967 Arena City. His name was Kurt Prince Goldberg, an actual student of Ludwig, way back in Germany in the 20s. And here we have a shot of right next door to the student rejecting the 1970. He called it there's Walensky's. Thank you very much, Al Savitz. We'll have to do that again. I guess they like the water, Smith and Walensky's. This is where I was going to take a boat taxi to work from the suburbs. And the guy at lunch said, you want to come to Chicago? You got an option of going to Paris or Chicago? You out of your mind? You wanted to entice that whale meal tax crew back to sweet home downtown Chicago to build a circle in the center to bring it back to Another bridge? This is where we found the uh, corkscrew folk are walking around. Back in 1913. Did you the time warp? Jump the left, step the right, count the gift, and get the Frank Lloyd Wright. 
most famous name in Prairie School Architecture, said architecture should come naturally out of its environment. And the broad horizon, broad-shouldered prairie inspired a broad horizon, broad-shouldered architecture. Now George C. Evans was the name of the actual architect who built the Reed Murdoch and Company Warehouse building. The brick building come up to the right. Built in 1913 as a grain, like years of corn or wheat in the grain storage days. But also note that this building is asymmetrical, wider to the right of the clock tower than the left. More window bays to the right of the tower than the left. not built like that. It's built completely even on both sides. But when they widened the street, the bridge will got water, the building was away. They would go around the building on Chicago Baby, they went right through it. Just hack off a whole chunk of the building, put the street through Chicago like simple solutions. Graham, Anderson, Here's the merchandise store. It was the biggest years. building in the Dramatic world for years. I think until the Pentagon. Do that decorations. That's Art Deco. Art At Deco. Four point four million square feet of floor space. When completed in 1930, this is the largest office building in the world and remained so until the Pentagon opened up for World War II. Now, when the post office saw this place with all its doors and addresses, they said. Okay, you get your own zip code. First building in the world with its own zip code. Commissioned by Marshall Field and Company to be the great central marketplace of the nation where wholesalers and buyers would come together and do business. But you know the date there? 1930. Oops. Heading into the Great Depression, followed by four years of World War, there'd be no wholesaling. Marshall Field lost their shirts on the building, had to sell for back taxes in 1945. Also the birthplace of the 